So these different pins here represent different areas that I've been fortunate enough to survey. So in all these pins right here in the yellow, this represents the area of Iwokrama and Sarama. These two pins right here that are red is where I've been able to work so far in the Kanukus. Um, last fall, which again, I'll get into these in a little bit more detail in a minute. Last fall, I was able to survey here at Kusad Mountain and then down here, which is just about seven kilometers away from Parabara Village. And then this past March, I was able to survey on the Kaichur Plateau. Um, I was, it was a short trip, but very, very memorable nonetheless. So as I mentioned before, what initially brought me to Guyana was a group called Operation Wallacea. So I had spent some time in Honduras with this group as a volunteer, and then afterwards for a few years as one of their herpetologists or somebody who studies reptiles and amphibians. And what the organization is, is it's an international organization with research sites throughout the world. And in 2011, we decided to open one in Guyana, and that was in Iwokrama and Sarama. And what it is, it's a network of academics worldwide, university volunteers, again, worldwide, and local rangers. Um, we have many from Iwokrama and Sarama and a lot of the various villages um, in that area that work alongside each other to conduct biodiversity surveys of any number of different species. So while I was there overseeing the expedition and also surveying the reptiles and amphibians, we would survey birds, bats, large mammals, fish. So the idea is to provide very thorough inventories every single year so that way we can have a long-term data set on the diversity and abundance of all the different species that we're studying. And by doing it year in and year out, going to the same exact sites, we can see how different factors, maybe El certain El Nino events or certain dry periods have affected the abundance or the presence of certain organisms. And what we've been doing is surveying, Iwokrama is divided into a sustainable utilization area as well as wilderness preserves. So our sites are divided evenly among those so that way we can also then evaluate the effectiveness of Iwokrama's logging regime on the impact of uh, the species that are found there. And then we also survey various sites in the forest that surround Sarama village. So I don't know if anybody has ever been able to visit Iwokrama International Center yet. If so, you might recognize this image as looking out from the main field station. Um, it's, it's a view that I never tire of. It, this is, it's the Essequibo River here, and then all you see is just lush tropical rainforest and, of course, the, the rainbow to cap it off. And this is, this is always where we start the expedition, and we introduce the volunteers to the different species that we're studying. We spend a few days prepping them with all of the, the survey techniques and everything else that we're going to do before them literally getting their feet wet. Most of these volunteers have never been into the field before, and so we're here to teach them not only how to survive in the jungle, but how to be effective scientists in the rainforest. So in order to get to most of our sites, it typically involves a boat um, or a large Bedford truck when we're transporting ourselves to Sarama. Um, this was, I believe, last year um, along the Essequibo River while we were heading to our second campsite called Cabo Cali. And Cabo Cali is a site that initially no work has been done there, um, but in a few years from now, all the trees as of now have been marked and it is going to be one of the sites that t uh, undergoes Iwokrama's logging regime. So this is just a, a clip of en route to Cabo Cali. As you can see, it's a bit treacherous and you know, at times it makes you hold your camera a little extra tight because you don't really want that going over the side or, of course, any of the volunteers, but um, I guess it'll be part of their experience anyway. Okay. Um, then within Sarama, um, we have two sites. One is basically on land owned by both Sarama and Iwokrama, 
Um, but this site represents probably one of my favorite sites that I've been fortunate enough to survey. Um, and I've probably spent, at this point over the years, a good month there. Uh, and this is called Rock Landing. Now, again, if any of you are familiar with this site, you'll notice that these thatched roofs are no longer there. They have exchanged them for uh, more weather resistant and sustainable zinc roofs. Um, but I personally prefer the feel of thatched roofs. Um, and this was just one of our nights. So we always set up this site over here, this uh, structure to be our research tent. And then this is food. And we try not to mix the two together because you know when you have a team of scientists making specimens and you know having all that out, you don't really want to mix your food with that. But sometimes if you have too many volunteers, it's inevitable and you don't really know exactly what it is you're eating. Um, but again, all part of the experience. <laughs> 